my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So for those of you that don't know, I co-run a Facebook group, UK Cricket Creators. You don't need to be in the UK to join, uh, but you do need to love your cricket or want to really get into cricket. But as I say, you can live anywhere in the world. Every month we've been doing free events. We do between six and eight a month. And every month we do a Dreaming Tree project. I absolutely love Dreaming Tree. They are fantastic. So this month we're doing the Christmas Luminary. I'll link to it in the description below. Also in the description below, I will link to Dreaming Tree's YouTube because Leo is fantastic. I will not be doing each of these projects as a tutorial. You can go and watch Leo talk them through because he doesn't need me parroting him. But what I am going to do for each project is show you how you can get it cut ready so that when you come to the event, all your pieces are cut and ready for us to put them together. So the first thing you need to do is get the file. As I say, this one is in the description below and you can then install it. So you need to add it to your cart and then pay for it. And then once you've done that, you'll find it in your downloads. You can then select it and it will start downloading to your computer for you. Once it's downloaded, I always choose to show in folder so that I know where it is. I then open it up and I choose the SVG folder. And these are each of the pieces that you'll need to upload to Design Space. So I click the first one and hold down my shift key and then my arrow to select them all at once. And then I move them across to my pictures so that I can easily find them. We can then come into design space and we're going to upload, upload image, browse. You can then go to your pictures and you can start uploading. So if we look at this one, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven main files. And we're gonna bring those in first. So I'm gonna bring the first one in. You need to keep it as the name that this Dream Tree has given it. And if it hasn't given it a name, you then need to go into the original file and find the name, but it should come in with that image name and you want to keep it as that. The other thing I do is I always give them a tag and I just do DT so that I can find all my dreaming tree images really quickly. And I can then save that. I'm then going to upload the next one. Open that, give it a tag and save. And I'm going to do that for each of those seven main pieces. Once I've uploaded these first seven pieces, which is the main bulk of our luminary, I'm then going to select them all and insert images to my canvas. So I want to work with these ones first because they're our main bulk. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually separate them into their colors. So I'm gonna do red over here and then green. So our green pieces are the base of our luminary and then the red pieces are the main bulk of our luminary. Now, if we look at this red piece, you'll see we've got score lines. Now, Dreaming Tree, they will always come in, if we look at the layers panel, as cut lines. Now, they are currently tiny dashed cut lines. If we select that layer by using our layers panel and we change it from a cut to a score, they remain as broken score lines. This actually takes a really long time and will increase your cut time dramatically. Not only that, because they are broken score lines, the actual fold is not brilliant. It can crack and it can be quite difficult and you're gonna end up having to use an actual bone folder. So if it is broken like this, instead of changing it to a score, keep it as a cut and all the score lines in this file are broken. So we are going to keep them all as cuts. 
what that means is that yes it will cut into your cardstock but when you come to fold them you get this beautiful crisp fold so keep them all as cut lines you do not need to change them with this file so you're going to need one two three four five sheets of 12 by 12 in this red or whatever color you want to do and then you're going to need two sheets of 12 by 12 for this shade green i'll be using american craft cardstock but you can use any cardstock you've got now the other thing you may want to change is if we look at these you've got the actual base You've got the actual body of the luminary and then you've got these bows as well and the bows go on the base. You may want to cut them in a different material so if you want to do that you need to do a little bit of work. So I'm just going to get one of them and with this one they are all the same so each of these pieces are exactly the same which makes our life a little bit easier. With this one here all I'm going to do is duplicate it. And if I click on the red part of that group layer, I can change the colour. And for the time being, I'm just changing it to a lilac. I'm going to work with the duplicate first. So I'm going to make sure, if I come to my layers panel, that the cut, that the card cut is selected. And I can then bring up my contour tool, which is at the bottom of my layers panel. I'm going to hide all contours. And when you hide all contours, you'll always be left with the top one. I can bring my bows back and then just remove that top layer. So that will leave me with just my bows. I've then got my score lines, which are cut lines. And again, if I select that in my layers panel, I can go down to contour. Again, nice and easy, hide all contours, but be aware it will always leave that top layer there. I can zoom right in and I can then bring back those bow score lines, which are cut lines. And then of course, hide that top one. Because they are grouped and I didn't ungroup them, they're exactly as they should be. And I can then, because they're all the same, I can just duplicate them so I've got four sets of bows. We can then work on this one. So again, I'm going to use my layers panel to select the actual card cut. I can go to contour. This time, I'm just going to contour away those two bows and then close it down. And then if I select the actual score lines, which are cut lines and contour, again, I can zoom right in and I can remove those bow scores, which are cuts. Now, as I say, these and these are all the same. So I'm actually going to delete those three and then I'm going to duplicate this one. So I've got four of them and they can then be brought back down to that pile. Now there's one more thing we have to do with these main parts. If we go to make it now, you'll see all our score lines are separate from our cardstock because they are only grouped. So what we need to do is actually attach them. So if I click on each of them, I can come to my layers panel and attach. I can do the same with this one, attach. And if we then look at the top of our layers panel, you'll see that they are attached. So the score lines are now actually attached to the cardstock. So if we look at the layers panel, everything is now attached. So all of those score lines are now attached to their piece of cardstock. We can now bring in the rest of the file. So I'm going to go to upload upload image, browse, and this time I'm going to bring in the panels, the vellum and the um, gold cardstock. So if we look at these, we've got our white vellum pieces, 
which is going to go on our base. And then we've got our gold cutout pieces as well, which are also going to go on our base with our bows. And I'm going to leave those as we they are. I've then got my green cutouts to go on my main body. And again, I'm going to leave those as they are. And the greens are all in a nice different shade so I can see clearly what's meant to be what. Now these are these ones here are going to need 12 by 12 as well so you're going to need two 12 by 12 cardstock sheets of those. Now our vellum has very nicely been separated into A4 with us now. Now as you can see the greens, we've got two lots of greens, they are the same shade of green so it's automatically going to put them on the same mat but rather than change the colour on them I'm going to keep them the same and I'm going to show you how we can separate them into different mats when we get through to the next stage. So I'm going to keep them as both the same shade of green but you will be able to cut them out with A4 vellum and if you haven't got green and red vellum you can do it in white and I will show you how you can colour your white vellum using ink. As I say, I will not be doing a tutorial video on each of these on how to put them together. Leo does a fab job, but what I will be doing is a video on each of our event projects so that you can get them cut ready for the event. And I'll also show you in another video how you can change white vellum into colored vellum. Now the red vellum is very similar to our red cardstock. And if we go to color sync, you'll see they are actually the same. I don't want them to be. So what I'm gonna do is just change the color slightly on that one. Let's stay to a pink. And then I can move this one down so that I know that's my vellum. We've already separated our cardstock, our red cardstock and our bows, and we've gone through and attached all of our score lines which are actually cut lines we don't need to do anything else so we've got our red base cardstock our green base cardstock we've got our green um, cardstock to go on top of our red we've got our green vellum our red vellum and our white vellum but of course you can cut it all out in white vellum we've got our gold and our bows and of course, as I say, all of our score lines, which are cut lines, are attached. So if we then go to make it, you'll see that everything is as it should be. Apart from our red and our green vellum, which we'll look at in a second. But we've got our white vellum. We've got our red main body pieces. We've got our gold for our base. We've got our green base pieces. We've got our green pattern pieces. And we've got our bows. So if we look at our vellum, because they are the same color, they've automatically gone on to the same mat, which is fine if you've got 12 by 12 vellum. But if you've only got A4, that's obviously a problem. So if we click on the two section, you'll see it comes up with these three dots. If I select those, I've then got the choice to move object or hide selected. I'm going to move object. I can then select a new mat. I can give it a new color or keep it as its current color. And then it will put it onto a new mat for me. So I've got this new mat and of course I can move that across and I've got the original one. The same with our red which I obviously changed to pink. If I've only got A4 I can select this two piece, click on the three dots, move object, select a new mat and I'll keep the colour as it is and then that's gone to a new mat as well. 
We can then go to continue and you can of course cut everything out. So those of you joining us for the event next week, we would like everything to be pre-cut. If you've got any problems, you can of course send myself or Laura a message. You can comment below. If anyone else has any, any questions, if you're going to do this on your own and you want help with anything, you can obviously come here and ask me for the uh, getting cut ready. And then for the putting together, as I say, Leo over at Dreaming Tree, He's amazing. He covers all your bases. So he's well worth watching if you're doing a Dreaming Tree project. If you've got any questions, please do put them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. Also hit that notification bell because it will let you know every time I, I upload a new video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.